Hello loves, I am sorry I've been MIA. Things have gone so quick recently. Um, it's crazy. So, um, you guys know from, what was it, uh, a couple weeks ago, that I passed my final exam and I'm officially graduating and everything. And um, after that, the week after that, we began our 12 hour shifts. So my first 12 hour shift was, um, when was it? The 29th and the 30th, which was a Friday and Saturday. And I was so nervous because I'm like, I don't know how to, do I prepare for it? What do I eat? Like that was my biggest concern. I'm like, what am I gonna eat? And if I'm gonna be tired? Um, as far as being tired, I was fine. I've done 12 hours, I've done 16 hours, I've done a 22 hour day for my job. Um, so I knew for the most part I should be good as far as that. But it was the first time doing 12 hours as a nurse, well, a nursing student, and um, it's way more involved. You're constantly on your feet, constantly turning patients, repositioning them, washing them. You know, um, you're on your feet pretty much the entire time. So. I wasn't sure what the 12 hours is going to be like and let me just tell you guys I love it like I'm so happy doing my 12 hour shows because it really gives me a feel of what nursing is going to be like once I take my boards and I get a job so as far as um, being tired I'm pretty good on that end um, there have been times that I felt kind of sleepy and what I have done in those cases because I do not drink um, soda or coffee and I barely drink tea I found um, there's like a little fizzy drink, like an energy drink. Um, well, not really energy. It's like a green tea. I'll take anything that has a green tea um, kind of supplement, but I won't take anything that has too much caffeine because I'm caffeine sensitive and I get headaches from it. So that has helped. Um, as far as food, what I do try to do is in the morning I try to have a good breakfast. So um, I'll have oatmeal and eggs or I'll make an omelet the night before and I'll eat that really quick. And so my day starts and I'm at the hospital about 6.15 and I'm on the floor by 6.30. Our, um, our instructors like us there before our nurses get there so that we can listen to rounds and we can, you know, fully get acclimated to the floor and figure out anything that we may possibly need. So once I'm there, I listen to rounds from the patient that is, um, from the nurse that's now going to go off. And um, once we get our full... Uh, handoff report we go in we check the patients we see if there's anything that needs to be changed like the lines um what new medications are going to be ordered we check that um what medications are due when are they due do we have it um if we're going to you know give the patient a bath do we need to get linen uh if the patient is going to go down for um a procedure uh we'd make sure that we're going to give anything the patient needs needs like such as medicine before they go down so we try to forgot everything that we possibly need in the room before we go in and do everything. So for me, I'm in the ICU, which I love, and um, I get my report, I go in with my nurse, and we do assessments. Now the nurses where I'm at are absolutely fantastic. They have allowed me to do so much where they just pretty much, they watch me do the assessment, they'll also listen to themselves, and then I'll chart, and after I chart, they actually go and they review everything and they complete it. So. After handoff report and after checking that everything um, I need, I have everything that I need, I go in and I do my assessments. I listen to the heart, lungs, I listen to the stomach, I check for pulses, I check um, for any um, bed, excuse me, any pressure ulcers. I check the lines to make sure that nothing needs to be changed. I check the IV site to make sure that it's running properly. And I also check the room for any safety concerns, make sure nothing's on the floor, um, make sure if they're on a fluid restriction, they don't have fluids in their room or um, get them a new drink um, for when I do come in and give meds. So I'll do everything for that patient and then I'll go in and I chart. One thing I've learned definitely being in the ICU and I think every nurse on um, in any nursing student you should definitely do this is after you complete an assessment chart it don't wait until later in the day to do all your charting because so much stuff can happen in between that one you could forget something two there can be an emergency and you're playing catch up the rest of the day and it's just better to just chart do your assessment chart and get it done so i'll go and i'll try to everything and then I move on to my next patient, and I'll do the same thing again, assessments, everything like that. I check the ventilators, um, I check to see um, what are they set at, I make sure that it's um, matching what the order is, and um, I'll do my mouth care. I do that first thing in the morning also, because um, we do mouth care for ventilated patients Q4 hours. So I will do all of that. 
Um, I will also, you know, give the patient a bath if they need it, if the patient ha wasn't given a bath like the night before, and, um, you know, change sheets, reposition the patient if they're um, unable to move themselves, we move them Q2 hours. So I will do all of that, and then I go and chart. After this point, then I'll check to make sure that no new orders are being put in. And somewhere around 10 o'clock, our hospital has rounds where the doctor, um, the resident, the attending, um, nutrition, pharmacy, uh, the nurse, nurse manager, everybody comes and they do rounds on each patient. And they'll pretty much figure out where the patient is at this point in time and then what is the future plan of care. So I'll listen to that. Um, I'll give any input if I have any. And then after rounds, uh, we will enact anything that might be new or we'll continue doing what we have been doing. So by this point, um, it's going to be time for my patient to have their turn, um, as in turn, turn their positioning in their bed. And then somewhere around 11 o'clock, then I'm going to do my oral care again. And when I go back to do my oral care, then again, I'll do another assessment. But now this assessment is going to be a little bit more brief. Um, as far as charting because we have an initial assessment which is what we do for like when I first come on and then we have a Q4 hour bundle so you have like maybe six things on there instead of having 12 things that you have to do so again it's going to be did you do mouth care um, what is the patient's pain um, you check their eyes you check their reflexes you check their pulses you listen to their heart you listen to their stomach do they have bowel sounds do they have any urine output do they have any fecal output all of that so that gets started again but it's now more condensed and after that it's pretty much the same thing go in chart give meds and then well go in assessment give meds chart and then I'll do the same thing for the next patient and during this time you would think like oh, okay I have a lot of time in between now I might get a little bit of downtime maybe 10-15 minutes and then that's maybe like after I've completed a chart and everything but I try to make sure that if I see any other nurse having any issues or needs help I try to get up and do it and I don't spend time sitting down and just relaxing and talking I want to see anything and everything if a patient is going down to the cath lab I want to go if the patient is getting um, an um, IND like an incision and drainage I want to go I've seen abscesses being drained I've seen um, you know, catheters being put in, I've seen catheters being taken out, I've seen a uh, um, thoracentesis, I've seen a bronchoscopy, anything that is being done, even if it's the smallest thing as taking out a stitch, I want to see it because I need to know what is it that I need to do as a nurse and what is it that I need to look out for. So I try to watch any nurse, even the nurse that I'm not with, I just go and ask, I'm like, hi, do you guys mind if I sit in and I watch this procedure? And no one has ever turned me down and for the most part, no one um, will. So I'll go in and I try to learn as much as possible. I'll ask questions and, you know, then I'll go back and reflect and if there's anything that I'm unsure of, I'll go and I'll um, do a little bit more research on it. Um, as far as lunch, there's really no set time. The unit that I'm on, um, I'm able to go and grab a snack. So what I've done for snacks, which seems to be the best thing for me, is cheese sticks and pretzels, and then I'll bring some type of fruit. I won't eat it all at once, so generally I'll probably have the fruit, and a lot of times I'll bring like grapes or an orange. So I'll nibble on that, and then when I start to get a little bit hungry, but it's still too early, like I try not to eat before one or two, because I feel like if I eat then, then I'm going to be hungry, because I won't get off until seven. So I'll eat my... Um, pretzels and cheese and that will hold me over and then I'll probably eat some around three four depending on how much of the pretzels and cheese I ate and um, I try to do a salad with some type of meat and that has been working for me really well I haven't been hungry on my shift and that is a good thing because I can't function when I'm hungry um as far as getting tired I seem to get tired earlier than in the day than I am later on I seem to catch like a second wind somewhere around two o'clock so I'm good from t two to seven that's fine I'll just get a little tired and like I said I'll have a little bit of a green tea um, supplement or I'll just drink a lot of water and um, what I actually tried to what another nurse had was like the Dasani um, flavored drinks you have like a pineapple coconut that was amazing so I actually need to get that for myself but I drink lots and lots of water because um, I know when I was just doing my med surge rotation, I barely drink water. I probably wouldn't drink water until I was going to lunch and then done for the day. So with having 12 hour shifts, I want to make sure I stay hydrated. So I always keep a water near me and I drink as much as possible. And that does seem to help with any type of fatigue for me. Um, 
And that's pretty much it. I found an ICU S-Bar online. Actually, I think it's from Nurse Nicole on her blog site. So Google it and then um, use it if you are in the ICU. Um, a lot of nurses that I've noticed, they've all created their own S-Bars. The hospital does seem to give like... Um, not, I guess it's kind of like an S-bar, but it already has the patient's information on there, and they print it out, and then you can just fill it in as you go. But for me, because I'm not used to used to the way it looks, when I'm listening to handoff report, I don't know where everything is, so then I end up turning the paper over and just writing on the back. So I like using my own S-bar, and I think I'm going to tweak the um, ICU S-bar and then the one I created and try to combine the two so that I have one for a general med surge and then one for the ICU, which is a little bit more, um, I guess, advanced, I should say, that includes like ventilation, um, tricks, um, information, all that stuff. I'll put that on, on, on to the S-bar as well. So my advice to you is definitely make your own S-bar because it'll work for you and it's easier to remember everything. I also asked the nurses, do, how long do they keep their own S-bars? Do they just throw them out? And what they've said is, is that if they know that they're going to be back within that week, um, so say they had 312s and say if it's back-to-back -back or it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday or whatever it is, they will keep the S-bar because they try to do continuity of care and they try to assign the same nurse to the same patient. So it's good to have that information because it makes it easier on you because you already know what's going on with the patient but you have everything written down. So for the times that I've gotten the same patient, what I've done is, is I will switch to a different ink and write on the same S-bar sheet if it's not completely filled. And I'll just add in additional information. That way everything is on one sheet. And that is great. So I definitely recommend getting two or three different colored pens. So black is my go-to pen. That is what I generally write with because that's what you need for medical documentation. Um, blue will be the next pen that I'll use and that'll be for the second day that I get that patient and then red or something like that will be the third one. I try to reserve red really for things that I want to stand out. Like if I need to um, ask for a consult, I'll write that in red or I'll highlight it. Actually, matter of fact, most of the time I highlight it. If I need to remember that the patient is MPO, I will put that on top of my SP S bar and highlight that as well. Um, if I need to remember something to ask the doctor when they come up for rounds, I'll write that on the sheet. Any medications that are new that I need to teach, I'll highlight that. Um, anything that is a high priority thing, I will highlight. So I definitely recommend getting different colored highlighters or pens so that you can keep track of everything. And um, any abnormal labs, I will also highlight or um, write down with a different pen as well. And these are some of the tips that I've learned along the way that have helped me organize um, a little bit better. And I think they really work. Um, what else? I mean, that's all I can really think of. Some of my other friends um, that are in the ICU, they have the night shift. So I've asked them what do they think it's like um, doing the night shift. And for most part, people who are doing the night shift, they actually chose to be on that. So they seem to be like night people. So they are fine with it. I'm not a night person, but um, when I graduate, if I am ever offered a position um, at night, I am absolutely going to take it because um, I really want to be in the ICU and I will do anything in my power to do it. So if that means that I'm just going to be super sleepy and, you know, possibly starting to go to coffee or something like that, then that's just what I'll do. But I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get into the position that I want. So I'm really, really excited about everything. So as of now, I have completed four 12s. Tomorrow and Tuesday will be my last two 12s. Um, and then I will be done as far as like clinically with my capstone experience. But it has been absolutely amazing and I love it. Um, as far as the rest of the week, Thursday is my last class, kind of. Um, I'm not even sure what we're doing Thursday, but we have to go in, so going. And then Friday, we are having um, a, like a get-together at a baseball game that we're going to go to. So I'll probably record that as well. And then Monday is my pinning ceremony, and Thursday is my actual graduation. So things have gone by so fast. It's absolutely amazing. But I wanted to thank um, all my subscribers for the well wishes and the comments and the congratulations. I read every single one of them. It means a lot to me, so I really appreciate everything. Let me know how you guys are doing with your um, semester. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just let me know. I'll get back to you guys. All right? See you guys later. Bye.